Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Barone, and welcome to Healthy Holidays. I am so excited about this presentation. I love the holidays. Uh, you know, you get a little more time for leisure, maybe a nice trip to a nice place, happy times with your family and kids. You know, maybe you're religious and all the traditions, decorating Christmas carols, giving presents, receiving presents. And what about having a beautiful meal, home-cooked meal with everyone that you love? There's nothing unhealthy about that. But I love the title of this presentation because it got so many different reactions from people. So many people would be just like, oh, you know, that's uh, holidays are the time that I let go. I don't think about anything in the holidays. I don't want to be healthy, you know? And I find that really strange, you know, because I think this holiday season is really potentially the healthiest time of year. And this is going to be a presentation on how to make this the healthiest time of year possible. A little bit about me. I'm Dr. Gary Barone. I've, I've been a doctor of chiropractic since 2000. I'm a certified ART provider. In 2008, I became an international certified chiropractic sport physician. And in 2010, I became a certified strength and conditioning specialist. And I'm currently a resident of the Academy of Chiropractic Family Practice, which is a pediatrics and family wellness specialty. I've worked at multiple international sporting events, including eight Ironman Canada triathlons. And most proudly, I've served and educated our community in Newport Village Chiropractic for 15 years. And in that 15 years, you know, I've noticed a lot of things in our community. Uh, there is one in particular, one urgent problem that people don't really think is urgent. And that's kind of the problem. The problem is that people are very reactive and they're not proactive when it comes to their health. And this, this is a huge issue because they're not preventing disease. They're just waiting until they get sick. They're even waiting until they have back problems to get care. <clears throat> you know, I'll tell you a little story about a guy, a member of my family, his name, his name's Gino. His name's not Gino. I made it up. I made up his name. The story is true. And it's about 25 or 30 years ago. And he went off to, um, on a business trip. He went abroad and he had two little kids and a wife, and um, he was about 30 years old. And when he was on that trip, he had a heart attack, and he died. And the one thing, you know, the one thing I think of, obviously, is just him leaving his wife and kids, but, and, and just that, you know, what he left behind, it was hard for me to fathom back then. I mean, I was a teenager, but... You know, the one thing, I try and put myself in his place sometimes, and I think, what would be going through my mind at that time? And one thing that I'd be thinking, if I were to have, if I were going to have a heart attack this afternoon, I'd be thinking, what could I have done differently? What, if I were able to go back in time, what would I do differently? And this, when you talk about wellness care, wellness care is your opportunity to go back in time. And and change those things, change those little things that could possibly make you healthy. So I want to ask you, what could you do differently? And we're going to talk about a lot of things that we could do differently. And um, those things are healthy eating, healthy activity, healthy giving, healthy caring, and healthy bodies. And we're going to spend five minutes on each of these things, healthy eating, healthy activity, five on giving and caring, and healthy bodies another five minutes, which I bet you're going to be able to guess what that's all about. But um, we're going to talk about all the beautiful, healthy things about Christmas time and how to use those beautiful things to maximize your health. So what is the enemy of wellness? Right? It's stress. The chiropractic perspective, ever since the chiropractic started 120-something years ago, I think it's exactly 120 years ago, the stress is the enemy of wellness. Every disease is caused by stress. And all stress comes from three places, your thoughts, trauma, and toxins. There are three types of stress. So thoughts, emotional stress. And you think, oh, I'm so stressed out, I'm so stressed out. That's emotional stress, right? 
And what kind of emotional stress do you have in the holidays? You know, maybe it's uh, maybe the dinner is a stress. You got to visit the in-laws and your Uncle Joe's new wife who, you know, just shoots off at the mouth and stresses you out. Maybe you're stressed out about gifts, right? Man, what, what do I get my wife, you know, or whatever, my boss? What do I get? What, you know, what am I going to do? And there are ways to overcome these things. What about physical stress? Usually when you think about going to a chiropractor, you're thinking about physical stress. You know, oh, you have whiplash or you bent down to pick something up and bam. What, what kind of a physical stress do you have around this time, though? You know, maybe shoveling if it ever snows again, shoveling snow or raking or um, stress could also, physical stress comes from being indoors and being sedentary. So being inactive is a physical stress. Then there's toxins. I'm showing some pills there, but toxins can come from a lot of places. It's not just side effects from drugs. Toxins can come from sugar, alcohol, pesticides, car exhaust, uh, chemicals on your food, or even just chemicals, cleaning chemicals. But all of this stress has one thing in common, and that is that your nervous system, your brain and spinal cord that you can see on the right-hand side there, your nervous system has to process that stress. And all of that stress, your thoughts, trauma, and toxins, goes into that same pool and gets processed by your nervous system. When your nervous system gets stressed out, that results in a negative behavior, and that negative behavior results in disease. And this is the chiropractic paradigm. Your thoughts, trauma, and toxins gets processed by the nervous system, results in what we call a subluxation, that stress on the nervous system, that interference, and then that results in disease. So let's talk about healthy eating. Every person is different, is different and has different needs, but there are some axioms, some things that are true for everybody, at least I think so. And uh, we're gonna go over some of those things. My theory with eating is really simple, okay? And mine is, I don't count calories, I focus on the quality of the food. So my gold standard for healthy eating is to eat organic fruits and vegetables, not grains, right? Fruits and veg vegetables, fresh fruits and vegetables, and organic, if you eat meat, organic or grass-finished meats. <clears throat> so good sources for this would be spud.ca. Uh, one of the reasons I like spud is they just have all the products and it arrives right on my doorstep every Thursday and I can plan it out, I can budget it. Uh, you know, there's no binge shopping. You know, a lot of the time you go to the supermarket and you go, oh, you know, Costco's the worst. Obviously, you spend $400 without, oh yeah, I think I'll buy this. And, you know, but even at the, at the grocery store, you might say, oh, you know, I'll just buy this frozen pizza for tonight or, you know, and there, you don't do that when you, when you do use something like spud.ca, you're a lot more organized. The other advantage is, you know, if I'm eating all organic, well, I can get, if I want to get some potatoes and some onions, I can get potatoes at Thrifty, but I can't get organic onions. And I can get organic onions at IGA, but I can't get organic potatoes. So I have to make two trips to the grocery store. So it's all about creating habits, less bin shopping. And tell you what, I even have a referral code right there, CRVAN-BARGAR. If you want to try it out, you save $20. And uh, so that's something that's worth trying out. And my silver choice would be organic or canned fruit and vegetables. And then the next one would probably be the organic dry food, like your grains, your rice, and your noodles. So why organic? Some of you might be wondering this because there's a, there are a lot of people out there who just say, oh, you know, the organic has toxins too. And, and you know, I don't think it's that much better. And there's a lot of misinformation out there. And I was buying organic bananas once and the lady was like, you know, these have thick skins. You don't really have to buy organic. You're better to buy local bananas. And I'm thinking, really, local bananas? Right, because I live in Guatemala. But then, you know, I told her something about, well, I was worried about the health of the workers. And this website, ewg.org, is a good little source for that information. I'm not going to get into it. I'm here to talk about more toxins, because there are more. If you have food sensitivities, then those foods are toxic to you. They're not toxic to everybody, mind you, probably, as far as we know. But if you're overweight, if you're tired, you have dark rings under your eyes, psoriasis, eczema, irritable bowel disease, bloating, 
What about kids, you know, HD, ADHD and learning disabilities or behavioral problems? Something is wrong and you can change their diet to make it better. And the top four food sensitivities are gluten, dairy, soy, and eggs. All right. The two tips though, I'm gonna give you two tips. I'm not gonna get into it, is um, we tend to crave foods that we're sensitive to. You know, my daughter, we just took her off of dairy, off of milk, but she was always like, I want milk, I want milk, I want milk, and we just took her off it. And uh, we noticed a difference in, you know, just the way she looked, the, the shape of her, her tummy was different. It, it is something that we're, you know, definitely concerned she was sensitive to. And then also some people are like, oh, you know, I'm 80% gluten-free. This is my second tip. Gluten-free means zero gluten. You have to be zero gluten for three months to see the positive effect. One of the things I recommend is the Gluten Summit. You go to glutensummit.com and um, I think it costs $97 now. You can buy 30 lectures, 30 hours, around 30 hours of resources from the top experts in the world. So if you're into that, if you want to really look into your food sensitivities, not just about gluten, but about a lot of things, that is an amazing resource. All right, let's move on to the next toxin. You're not going to like this. I don't like it. It's alcohol. I'll, I'll tell you the truth. I'm not giving up alcohol. Alcohol is a key part of my parenting strategy. I still remember having my, my 10 day old son in my arm and walking down the street with him in one arm and a case of beer in the other one. And somebody looked at me funny on the street and I just looked at them and said, parenting's easy. Anyway, but the truth is your body can only process one drink per day. So you can do whatever you want, establish your own values, but you have to understand the consequences that it has on your body. And you have to understand that that is going to be one of the toxins that, that adds up and causes stress on your body. Here's something positive, all right? One of the best things you can do during Christmas is have a home-cooked meal. And so if you have an organic turkey and you're, you're making everything from scratch, I mean, that is, if you did that every day, you know, that would be a huge benefit for you and your family. Not to mention just the act of caring for your family. There are no sacrifices. It's a little hard work, but I mean, there are no sacrifices here. There's huge enjoyment and you know, you're feasting, but it's actually good for you. Now, no matter how good, no matter how good your, um, your diet is, even the healthiest eaters have the opportunity to maximize with supplements. Uh, so, you know, good supplements are really worth it. So we recommend the USANA health pack or USANA essentials and you know, you can take our free online health assessment. I know when you come to our office, we do a care plan with you. And a lot of the time we email you this, um, the link to do our free online health assessment, but you can also access it from our website. And maybe later I'll put a link below on this page here. And, um, you know, you always can maximize with supplements. You know, in our society, we have an exposure to an unnatural level of toxins. They're, that are created by things like exhaust, not to mention all those pesticides and herbicides that we're going to be exposed to. Um, so it is, it is something that's definitely worth considering. So what will you do differently? You're gonna eat organic only, organic only? You're gonna test for sensitivities, maybe drop gluten? You're gonna limit your alcohol? You're gonna cook at home? You're gonna take supplements? Let me know what you're going to do. Um, one, one thing where you can let me uh, know is go to facebook.com slash nvcairo and I have a, a section set up there and you can post your comments. Let me know what you think is a good idea, <clears throat> uh, any of these things. And uh, yeah, we're going to move on now. We're going to move on to healthy activity and healthy activity. Here we go. And there, we're going to look at a few different activities, not just exercise. Uh, but exercise is the first thing we're going to look at and some tips to stay active uh, Work out with some friends and stay accountable. So when you when you join a, a hockey team or a soccer team uh, You know you have to go to that you feel like you let people down if you don't go there are people watching There are people even there at the game so like, move your feet. Let's go. Don't let up You know they keep you accountable. That's a great way to work out Another thing is to take up winter sports. So really plan it out you know, one thing we did this weekend is we took all our mountain bikes, we went up to Whistler, 
and uh, we changed our mountain. We changed over from summer to winter because ski season started uh, over the weekend. So we took all our mountain bikes and put them in the storage room. Then we took out all our skis and all of our ski gloves and boot dryers and everything, and that's out. We're completely prepared to stay active all year round. We have a plan. If that doesn't work for you, maybe taking a trip to warm places, that might motivate you to stay in shape too, vis visually. And just keeping your routine, you know? Um, don't stop. But I have a surprise for you. Sometimes the best workout may be no workout at all. What if your body's drained, uh, you know, and you're just not ready for it? Well, there's a way to measure that. And that way is using heart rate variability. So heart rate variability is the ability for your body to change its beats per minute. And that tells us your ability to adapt to your surroundings. Because when you're under stress, you have to raise your heart rate. Rate. That's what your sympathetic nervous system does. And then when you have to digest and uh, relax, your parasympathetic nervous system kicks in and, and your heart rate slows down. There's an apparatus, there's an app, and uh, one of the things I use at home is uh, it's an app called iThlete, and it's got a finger sensor, and you stick your finger in it, and it takes about a minute, and it tells you your heart rate variability. So you can see on the right, this person's score is a 78. So you will perform better when your heart rate, your heart rate variability is high, and um, you reduce stress on your body if you rest when your heart rate variability is low. And an app like this will tell you whether it's a good day to work out. And I'll tell you something else about heart rate variability. This inability to control your heart rate, this is a nervous system problem, right? If you, you look at that person who with a score of 78, you compare him to a score, somebody with a score of 83, a difference of five points. This person's score, he has a 30% increased risk of early death over the next 10 years, just because of that five point difference. A 30% increase and he has an increased risk of diabetes of 40 percent are you kidding me and what if it's you know we see people with a heart rate variability of 50. so that means they're like four times as likely to to get to die over the next 10 years as somebody with a high heart rate variability right and i've got another surprise for you i'm just going to throw this in there chiropractic is proven to raise heart rate variability i'm just telling you of course it does. It improves the function of the nervous system and your nervous system controls your heart rate. I mean, look at this chart. This is a chart of your nervous system. Here's your sympathetic nervous system, your flight or fight response, T1 to T to L2. It controls, it raises your heart rate and shuts down digestion. And then look over up here, up in the brain stem at S234, that's your parasympathetic nervous system. That increases your digestion and decreases your heart rate. So wow, what a, what a huge effect that chiropractic has. But let's move on. There are a couple of other, other activities that I wanna talk about. This one's really great. It also balances your sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. And this is meditation, whoops, meditation. So this is a great app called Pranayama. And I was trying to start the video, it just won't, uh, it won't, it don't, doesn't quite work, that's okay. Um, but yeah, the uh, what this does, this app actually trains you to how to breathe with your abdomen. And I've trained quite a few people in my office to breathe this way. Uh, and you can use it, you can also meditate at the same time and that clears your mind and decreases stress. Um, but I highly recommend this app, Pranayama. It's free at first when you first use it, but then when you want to use more challenging, uh, it does get more challenging because you get fewer breaths per minute and it gets more rewarding when you do it that way. Um, but I highly recommend this. Oh, there goes the video. Well, there, yeah. So there you go. Here's the person breathing. You can see him breathing through his diaphragm. Most people breathe up their chest. Um, but there's, a, there's actually quite a, a big tutorial on there about how to breathe. And another activity was music. I mean, a lot of people, the only time they sing would be Christmas time. They just belt out a few Christmas carols. But this stimulates brain function. This boosts language skills in children. You know, it shares elements of pitch and timing and timber, music does, with, um, 
language. So you, you really improve their language skills. <clears throat> and music increases work, workplace productivity and performance when you work out. It affects your memory and your emotion. And it can create an uplifting experience. And I always tell uh, Brittany, my assistant, you know, you have to create an uplifting experience with the music. If it's not, we're going to change it. But let's move on. I mean, this one's easy. This is the low-hanging fruit right here. This is going to make you healthier. But really focus on it. Socializing. Yeah, so that Christmas party, you know, is actually good for you. Having lots of friends decreases your risk of dementia by 26% and seeing friends and family daily halves the risk of dementia. Uh, so this is another easy way. And one of those things about Christmas, about the holidays, that really is just going to make you healthier just because it's Christmas, right? All right, so what are you going to do? What healthy activities are you going to do? Are you going to be more active? Are you going to pay attention to your reserves by measuring your HRV? Are you going to listen to music? Maybe you're going to sing or learn an instrument. That's even better. Are you going to socialize a little bit more? Or are you going to take up meditation and breathing? All of those things can improve your health. So remember to leave a comment. Let me know if any of those things are things that you're going to do. And we're going to move on to the next thing. That's healthy giving and caring. You know, this is probably the most valuable part of Christmas. But what are the benefits of giving and caring? Right? Let's look at our recent food drive. I brought 75 pounds of food that you all donated to the Share Food Bank. You know, it's so nice to help families in our community. And just telling you that, does that make you feel better? What does that make you feel like? And that feeling makes you healthier. And that balances your nervous system. Just that giving and caring. We have another drive coming up. It's called All I Want for Christmas. <clears throat> you know, uh, and this is a coat drive. So whenever you bring in a coat or a new toy that's in a box, we'll give you a coupon for a free initial exam to give to a friend. So not only are you giving to somebody in need, you are actually being thoughtful about somebody who you think can benefit from chiropractic care. And not just somebody who has back pain. People go, oh, but I don't know anybody who needs chiropractic. Think about people who maybe their heart rate variability needs to be elevated. Think about somebody who maybe would like a 30% lower chance of dying in the next 10 years. That's what I want you to think about. Just somebody who wants to be healthy, who wants to perform better. You know, like I said, anybody can react to pain. But the challenge is being proactive. And sure, you're helping others. But by helping others, remember, you're changing your physiology. Feelings of gratitude change your nervous system. <clears throat> You look at this person right here, this is actually the way we measure heart rate variability in our office, and it tells us the amount of stress you're under. So if you're normal, you will be right in this little bullseye right there. If you're stressed out, you're going to be way over to the left. Look where this person is. This poor schmuck is way over, way to the left. He's charting down here. You see it says sympathetic. So this is his flight or fight response engaged while he's just sitting there. So this person needs to have feelings of gratitude. You know, one of the things you can do is uh, say things that you're grateful for each morning. You know, um, I do this every morning. I'm grateful that I live in, in clean, safe places and that I have access to healthy food, things like that. I'm grateful for my health and the health of my family. Say them every day because that changes your physiology and makes you, makes you track a little bit more, makes your nervous system more balanced. It reduces your stress and that can raise your heart rate variability. And I'll tell you what, when you're grateful, people who are grateful talk about things they like and they're easy to shop for. You know, my old assistant, Christine, she talked so much and she was always grateful for everything. She was the easiest person to shop for. One day she was like, oh man, I'd love to have a Gary Payton Sonics jersey. And I was like, I didn't even know who Gary Payton was, but I just went online and bought her this and I gave it to her, gave it to her for Christmas. And she just like screamed and ran around the office for like 20 minutes. You know, and that, you know, that was good for me, too. I think it made me feel good being thoughtful. So what I do anyway, if you are worried about what to give people, start in January, make a little notepad on your, your iPhone, the little notes app that says Christmas gifts. Every time somebody says something, just write it down. 
<clears throat> at the end of the year, you'll be thankful for it. My wife's probably laughing because she's like, he has no idea who to, how to shop for people. That was a lucky one uh, shopping uh, for Christine. But like I said, people who are, who are grateful and talk a lot, <laughs> they're, they're very easy to shop for. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna move on now. Um, what, what things are you gonna do? Um, which one of those things are you gonna do uh, as far as uh, caring and giving? I guess that's about it. You're just a healthy caring and healthy, healthy giving. But next we're gonna talk about healthy bodies. Uh, you know, the best tips, keep your appointments and go when you feel fine. Chiropractic improves your ability to process stress. And it works by restoring your innate ability to be healthy. It helps you resist disease. And did I mention you should keep your appointments? Chiropractic helps you heal. It removes the interference in your nervous system, restoring your natural ability to resist disease. It helps you play. Chiropractic improves the connection between the brain and the body so you have better coordination and better performance. It helps you think. Chiropractic helps patients with learning disorders and ADHD by allowing the nervous system to perform correctly. It helps you to love. You know, when you have your health, you can dream again. They say when you lose your health, you only have one dream. You know, when you have your health, you can have a thousand dreams. And that's what chiropractic creates. It creates dreams. You know, when we look at fitness, every time you move a muscle in your body, your nervous system controls that. Chiropractic is the key to your nervous system actually functioning properly so you can become fit. Yeah, you could eat all those building blocks that have excellent nutrition, but if your nervous system isn't controlling where all of those nutrients go, then it just won't work right. And then the ability to think in classes like this, you know, your health education, but just the, the function of your brain, that's the, um, the main part of your nervous system. Why not remove all of that interference in your nervous system so that your brain can be clear, your mind can be clear. <clears throat> now that I know how to work videos, I can show you a video of me adjusting my daughter you know, it can have profound benefits. And so many adults come in regularly, but they leave their family behind. You know, and the one point I like to make is that if I had, you know, only $100 a year to spend on chiropractic adjustments, I would have two adjustments, one for my son, one for my daughter. And look how comfortable she is. You know, little kids, I just love getting adjusted. It's so gentle. She turns her head here on her own, I don't know, I'm not turning her head. You can see how gentle I'm holding it because she's able to just rotate her head. And I'm checking the alignment of her cranium and the alignment of her neck. My son confided in me today that she was he was lifting it up so that she couldn't get off. He was trying to trap her. All right, so I've got a special treat for you. These are some extra tips. <clears throat> this is exciting. We're gonna go back to this poor schmuck here. This poor schmuck happens to be me. This is my heart rate variability in April of this year. So why was it like this? I was getting adjusted. I was doing, I was eating organic. I was doing a lot of things right. The only thing I think I was doing wrong was I was having one espresso per day. And you know, one day I, I had an espresso and um, I just had my coffee, a single, mind you. And my son, who's very persistent, he wanted to play some game and I was putting my daughter's jacket on and I, he, he just kept asking me over and over again. And, you know, I just snapped back at him all of a sudden and, and said, you know, you have to stop asking me that. We have, play, we have things to do, stop asking me. And he started crying. And I realized, you know, that's not the type of parent that I want to be. And that's the last, that happens to be the last coffee I had. It, it's only because this happened. As soon as I measured this, uh, this September one uh, of this year, I measured this two days after I stopped drinking coffee. You see, I went straight into the green. So my sympathetic nervous system, my parasympathetic, completely balanced. And now two months later, still not drinking coffee, completely balanced. That coffee was a toxin for me. Not only that, when my, let me just get my pointer out. <clears throat> when my, here we go. When I was over here, it started to track over, once I balanced, then that reduced the stress in my nervous system so that my heart rate variability could raise. And that's when I start to get the health benefits, you know? And it's worth it to me, you know? 
one little thing like that to, you know, that was a good decision for me, I think. That's worth it. So when you look back and you say, well, what else could I have done? I just want to make one final tip, <clears throat> one final comment, and that's about the wellness lifestyle. You might think that dropping that coffee was a sacrifice for me. <clears throat> but when you're living the wellness lifestyle, that is when, that living the wellness lifestyle is when doing what's healthy makes you happy. That is the definition of what makes me happy because that those are my values. Your day is filled with decisions. You can decide between things that make you sick and something that makes you strong. Selecting that organic beef instead of fast food, that makes me happy because it makes me and my family strong. It's a no brainer. Are you kidding me? This is $9 for a pound of organic beef. I can feed my family. How much does it cost to go to get Happy Meals? A fridge full of organic fruit and vegetables, that makes me happy because I know it's good for me. Doing push-ups and sit-ups with my kids and watching them try and do it, I love that. Giving gifts to my kids and getting a card from them, seeing my grandchildren potentially one day, meeting them, and that will make me happy. Whatever you decisions you make, as I always say, it's up to you. You have to decide what's truly valuable for you. So what are you going to do? You're going to eat organic, test for sensitivities, control alcohol and caffeine, cook at home, take supplements, stay active, test your HRV, play music, socialize, meditate, give gifts and care about people, have an attitude of gratitude and get adjusted. Leave a comment for us on Facebook. Visit us on facebook.com slash nvcairo. And this has been Healthy Holidays. And I'm Dr. Gary Barone from Newport Village Chiropractic. Thank you. Have a healthy holiday and I'll see you I'll see you on the table. Bye-bye.